license and registration, he can sense your aggravation. The head of the fallen angel. The world is muttering the under the, the floorboards. Stomp even louder. On time. Let them know you are alive today. Or unhum. Did you know that your hands came with a ripple effect? Whisper tones unraveling like silk. Blood, sweat, and tears win by any means, poetry. Sway, look at me. Is a piece of the pie too good for me? Some may call it brought the mic. We call it poetry. Our spirit, like our history, is strong. Lists of challenges and wrongs more powerful than pain document a determination for equality. Emancipation rings hollow when parity is held in weight. And humanity doesn't dictate just law or land. Despite decades of disillusionment, we come back again and again, fighting for right beyond might. The parchment proclaimed it so, yet tests of time show appeasement to be the promised gift. Lest her words be true for all, the ripples and furls of her flag only cripple and hurl her masses headlong into never-ending nightmares. For false proclamation is worse than none. So, on fields as unbalanced as staggered steps of men drunk with power, so ultimately are unequal lives played out in classrooms, boardrooms, and courtrooms across the country. Such are the revelations of proclamations never meant to equate brothers of a nation. Such is the dilemma of a people who anchor hope, justice, or phantomed happiness upon words never designed, intended, nor able to free the spirit of a people. Well, hello, Sojourn with Words family and viewers, long time and new. Our audience is growing and we're very happy to hear from our viewers that you're enjoying Sojourn with Words as we're now in our 18th year. I'm Sister Joy, your host, and today we have a wonderful poet. Her name is Zaina Azam, and Zaina is a Palestinian-American poet, writer, and editor, and she is the Poet Laureate of Alexandria, Virginia, for the term 2022 through 2025. Zaina, welcome. Welcome to Sojourn with Words. Thank you so much, Sister Joy. I, I want to thank you for everything you do for Prince George's County and continue to do as Poet Laureate Emerita and all the opportunities you create for poets and, of course, for your poetry itself, which is so engaged and insightful and beautiful. And you've graced us with your poetry for many years. So I'm really honored to be on your program. Oh, thank you so much. Well, let's see. Let's let our viewing audience know a little bit more about you that hopefully will also enable them to further appreciate your poetry once we get to that portion of the program. So again, Zaina Azam, her book, Some Things Never Leave You, was released by Tiger Bark Press 2023. And her chapbook, Baina Baina, and I hope I'm saying that right, Baina Baina, in between, by the Poetry Box, and that was in 2021. Zaina has been nominated twice for a Pushcart Prize. Her poetry appears in journals and anthologies, including Pleiades, Plume, I'm never sure about these terminologies here, but uh, let's see, Mizna, Sukon, and she's, she can, Zaina will correct me, trust me, <laughs> 
passenger gyroscope, split this rock, street light magazine, cut leaf journal, Beltway Poetry Quarterly, Bettering American Poetry, and Making Mirrors, Writing, Writing by and for Refugees. Now, her poem, You Birth the Seeds, was set as a choral piece by renowned composer Melissa Dunphy. Zena is a mentor for We Are Not Numbers, a writing program for youth in Gaza, and volunteers for Grassroots Alexandria, which advocates for the civil rights of vulnerable communities. She holds an MA in Arabic literature from Georgetown University. I'm going to stop there because we really want to hear directly from our phenomenal guest poet, Zaina. Again, thank you for being with us today. And when 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 you were first approached about being poet laureate for Alexandria, Virginia, what was your reaction? Were you <laughs> anticipating it or were you really thrown by the honor? Oh, I was really thrown by the honor. I was so excited to hear about it. And I, you know, I had just actually retired from my full-time job the month before. And so... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so it was just an, the weary. Yes, it, you know, an amazing kind of step to take and and also knowing that I had more time really to to devote to it and to further my poetry but more importantly to, you know, bring poetry to Alexandria to create more opportunities for people in Alexandria to write. And and just to be more involved in the community in this is this whole new dimension. It was it's just very exciting, and I've been really loving it. I've been really loving it. Well, tell us a few of the things that are, are highlights for you that do you feel that you've accomplished as poet laureate since uh, your appointment in 2022. Uh, well, thanks for that question. I have done quite a bit. It's been uh, really exciting. There are certain things that I'm invited to do and expected to do, like a couple of poetry workshops every year. I've done one on acrostic poetry. I'm about to do one next month on um, poetry. I'm calling it Poem with a Cause, so it would be really political poetry, writing about what's meaningful to us. I've been involved with the uh, Office of Historic Alexandria. They asked me to write poems for commemorations in the city. And the city actually has two documented lynchings in our history. And so those are commemorated every year. And I've been asked to um, write a poem for those each year. And it's been a, a challenge and extremely meaningful. The the city also celebrates a huge birthday with like thousands of people by the river every year. So they asked me to write a, a poem to commemorate the birthday, or at least to commemorate to write about Alexandria. Actually, I'd like to read a poem that poem uh, that I read last year. Later in the program, I've had to write a poem for Juneteenth. I I judge uh, contests from the detention center, the the jail in Alexandria. I've judged a contest for the public schools. I write poems for different occasions like the Moms Demand Action, the anti-gun rally. And I I do, you know, I speak at schools and churches, et cetera. There's lots going on, of course, during National Poetry Month. We have a bus that our, the Alexandria system is called the Dash Bus System, and we have a poetry contest to put poems on the buses each spring. And then right now I'm doing this really exciting program. It's a haiku project, and so it's got different aspects to it, to it, but one of them is a contest, and I had judges choose 12 poems from, uh, 12 haiku from adults and students, 
And we have put them on placards, really, you know, like they look like yard signs. And we're going to be putting them throughout the city. And this is a new thing that we've never done before in Alexandria. I'm super excited about it. So that's that's some of the highlights that I've been doing. Wow. Well, that's more than just a few highlights. You've been busy. You've been very busy. I, I truly uh, appreciate the idea of taking poetry to where it normally is not found and to be able to have placards in the community uh, for passersby to see a poem and and to certainly for some to orient them and, and introduce them to haiku. That's that's phenomenal. So wonderful. When when we talk about, well, what inspires you as a poet, as a poet, and, and the fact that you have a particularly unique approach to even your experience in this country as as your parents of of immigrants and you're bilingual. Well, talk to us about your particular vantage point in coming to poetry. You know, it's just a joy. I have, I write about a lot of things, but the, what you mentioned is very figural in my family history and in what inspires me to write. My parents were Palestinian refugees. They actually had to flee their home in Palestine in 1948. And, and then, so they fled to Syria and I was born there. And when I was two, we moved to Lebanon. I had my childhood there. And then when I was 10 years old, we moved to the United States. So my parents were refugees. I'm an immigrant. So these are, you know, family things that really influence how I look at the world, how I understand marginalized communities, how I look at justice, how I look at human rights. And so I write a lot about these experiences. I write about myself being an immigrant, about my parents being refugees. I talk about the refugee experience for them as it aged with them as they aged and how they felt about being in exile all their lives. Of course, I write about all the things that everybody else writes about. I write about love and losing it and finding it. And I write about nature. I have a lot of poems about the moon and, you know, natural kind of phenomena. So I do write about all of these things. My chapbook, as you mentioned, is called Baina Baina in between. And Baina means between in Arabic. And when you say, when you put two together, it means betwixt and between. And it's the whole idea of being between cultures, between languages, between a home and exile, etc. So that's another thing that I write about. Okay. Well, now you mentioned your book. We want to make sure that our viewers are, are aware that your book and, and possibly your chat book are, are available. So let's let's do something now to, to let them know how to contact you, either a website or email, with the availability of the book. Let us know where can they get them. Oh, thanks for asking that. Yes, I do have a website and it's basically my name. It's www.zainaazam, Z-E-I-N-A-A-Z-Z-A-M.com. And both the full length collection, Some Things Never Leave You, and the chapbook, uh, Baina Baina in Between, are are highlighted there. And uh, there are links to go to, uh, to order them from the uh from the publishers. I also have a lot of poems that are linked on my publications page on my website, so you can read stuff online as well. Wonderful, wonderful. And now the uh, Some Things Never Leave You, that is available, I'm sure, at most bookstores? I don't know how many bookstores actually are carrying it. It actually just was published in July. So it's very newly published. Okay, so they could get that on your website. They can, yeah. They from there you would. It, it's linked to the publisher. It's I. I'm not selling it myself, but you could like you could link to the publisher and get it from there directly. And honestly, I always prefer that people, you know, support the small presses. I think. And is. the name of the press again is. It's called Tiger Bark Press. Tiger Bark Press. <laughs> it's a very small press in New York that accepted my book, you know, 
And we are very appreciative of those small presses that support poetry. Thank you so much. Well, it is time for us to transition just about to hear some of this phenomenal poetry by Zaina Azam. And Zaina, we, we have, uh, I guess, about, what, a little bit more than 10 minutes. So we want to allow our Sojourn with Words family now to hear the poetry of this phenomenal poet who is also the Poet Laureate of Alexandria, Virginia. So take a seat and listen up. Yeah. Zaina, the mic is yours. Thank you so much. I am so, I'm so delighted to be with you and to read on your program. The first poem I'd like to share is titled Just Like That. And it's a poem that, you know, I remember my childhood in the Middle East. And I think a lot of different, a lot of young people continue to feel this way. Just Like That. When our neighbor's son was gunned down in Beirut, when streets flooded like monsoon-like rains, my parents would only say, Inshallah, things will get better. At the beach when I was eight, a flurry of people rushed into the water, then returned somber, carrying a young man's limp body on a raft. Once, as my mother's nimble fingers braided my long black locks, I watched a war unfold on TV. Some nights, I fell asleep reciting my parents' words, Inshallah, things will get better, often thinking that maybe I, too, could come face to face with a gun or a bomb from the sky, storms that could sweep away my house or whirlpools as I swam in the sea. And just like that, my life would end, a little brown body washed ashore. Beautiful and just heartbreaking at the same time. Thank you for that one. Please continue. Okay, thank you. This is a poem about my experience being an immigrant and coming to this country. Immigrant. I grew up eating cheese with bitter olives, sesame and thyme infused olive oil on warm bread. Names in my family all meant something like lifelong challenges, beautiful, splendid, victorious, forgiving. In my childhood books, words flowed from right to left, Direction didn't matter then. At 10, we traveled east to west against time. I gained seven hours of youth, lost my compass. In New York, no sea to swallow the sun each day. Foods were sweet in America. People spoke as fast as they walked. Everything was large washing machines, supermarkets, even bananas and red grapes. We settled in this vast, cold place with neither boots nor a sense of how to be warm. Snowfalls were beautiful and cruel. The freezing air slapped our faces each morning. Inside, there was the smell of garlic and onions on the stove loud talking over the phone with relatives overseas. My family inhaled and exhaled politics like cigarettes all the time. We blamed the British, the Americans, Arab leaders, Zionists, communists, or a history that was simply unkind. The TV in the background reported news in a language we spoke, but did not really understand. All this over a good meal, always, as if the hunger was in our bellies and not in our hearts. Oh my, inhale politics like cigarettes. Oh, oh, 
Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, and very revealing. Very uh, truly, I, I get the experience. I, I don't want to interrupt your flow. Please. Oh yeah, no problem at all. But I know to me that it's, oh. it's it's an image that can you know that can get you. So I, you know, another another thing about being an immigrant is how do you pass on your culture to your children? I have two kids and, you know, of course they were born here and I want to have them learn Arabic and I want them to understand our culture. Of course, they know all about the food, but I don't want it just to be about the food, right? Anyway, this is a poem kind of that harkens to that. It's called A Language for Colors. And before I read it, I should say, I, I, I often put Arabic words in my English poems. I feel like they, it helps, it makes them more authentic to me. I and mean, this is kind of how I think, and this is my world. A language for colors. Asfar, she would say, pointing at a yellow tulip. And the color of grass, akhdar. My young daughter had mastered not only the colors, but also the throaty KH, two letters in English that equal one in Arabic. I would tell her it's the same sound as an khamse, khubiz, sabanich, five, bread, spinach. And my favorite name, khalid, immortal. I once confessed to a friend wistfully that I would not name my son Khalid because Americans couldn't pronounce it. Now I wonder about such wisdom. Even my eight-year-old could constrict her throat muscles the right way to say Khalid, immortal like an ancient olive tree, a flame that never abates, a mother's love. This spring, I saw a patch of double hybrid tulips, asfar, tinged with akhdar, and thought of my daughter's satisfied grin at learning those words thousands of miles away from her grandparents' home in Palestine. Here we are, hybrid Americans, living between two languages and speaking in colors, splendid flowers in a distant field. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Now there's a, a there was mention of a poem that had to do with drumming. <laughs> yes. Or <laughs> we get that poem in. I was so excited to see that you had drumming in the beginning of the program with your poetry. And it was by Doc Powell, who was part of the whole, he's a principal, I think, of the Malcolm X drummers and dancers it's the director yes and so I um I, I remember I attended some of the, the drum circle and I came home and wrote this poem and I thought I would read it in in their honor all the drummers and dancers wonderful wonderful so it's called Dante and the drum circle I trick up the 15th street incline drum slung on my shoulder on my left stands a statue of Dante Alighieri, towering from inside the park, in flowing robes, a wreath of laurel leaves framing his serious, unsmiling face. The philosopher-poet beckons me out of the traffic and noise and into Malcolm X Park. He is holding his signal narrative poem, The Divina Commedia, close to his chest, with both hands as if to say, look, this is my life's work. Already my ears sense the distant rhythms of conga and ashiko and jembe, the rumble of hands in beat in accelerating heat. I think, where else could I spend a Sunday afternoon starting with Dante's obsession with souls traveling from hell to purgatory to paradise, then jump forward seven centuries to a mass of vibrant and vibrating percussionists and dancers, but on a hilltop in DC. 
Walking up past the fountains, I find them in a makeshift winding circle where palms glide and aim and land, coax animal skins to come alive with rhythm, pulsate together like a wave of infinite patterns and beats. There is no thought of who or what or why, questions that always wrap us like a rough feeling shawl. What matters now is only the deep sound we create and repeat and its reverberations. I make my way between the lithe dancers who shake and sway, snaking in and out of the throbbing circle. They know in their souls how to marry drumbeat with heartbeat. I eke out a seat on a stone ledge, curl my legs around the djembe that journeyed from West Africa into my arms in D.C., slip into the rhythm. Leaving Dante's infernal world, I enter a space of harmony with strangers as we all nod and smile. A message resonates in the thrum of the drums. Could we have arrived at our own paradise? Hey, wonderful. Oh, Owl, that was for you and all the drummers at Malcolm X Park. Thank you, Zaina. How wonderful was that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Do we have perhaps one more short one? Well, we've, you know, got a few more minutes, but maybe okay. one more to uh, round us out, a closing piece, if you will. Thank you. Yes, I would like to read actually one of the poems I've written for Alexandria. Yes. It's about a diversity in the city. So it's one of the poems I've written as the poet laureate. And it's it's to talk about diversity. I, I had been thinking about I've been reading about how trees have networks in under underground and they nourish each other and you can't see them, but they communicate with each other and they nurture each other. And they help each other through times of, you know, like disease and drought. And so that was the metaphor I chose to use. Hey. Like the trees in Alexandria. The soil we sand on is packed with the history of growth, the biology of perseverance, as fertile and deep as our affinities to each other. This is where we start. It took us thousands of years to understand the community of trees in a forest, to listen to the way roots intertwine, communicate in safety underground. This is our language, too, of carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus as we construct infinite, unseen pathways to share nutrients and water, stories and poetry and songs. These are our common roots. We are the trees of the forest, leafy and floral, coniferous, with flashy crowns or simple beauty. So many shades of green and brown, hues of loveliness. This diversity is our touchstone. Cypress, juniper, and palm, Jasmine and Chakaranda. Many have traveled the world as flying seeds to land and regather and celebrate our homecoming. This is who we are. Our root systems teach us to behave as a single organism, to uplift all branches, young and old, she and he and they, watering and nourishing each other safeguarding saplings against injustice. This is our present and our legacy. We are the trees in Alexandria's forest. Oh, yes. I, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing it. Safeguarding our saplings. Oh, my goodness. How Thank you. Beautiful metaphor, such such beautiful poetry. Again, for our Sojourn with Words viewers that are with us, we are listening to Zaina Azam, the Alexandria, Virginia Poet Laureate, and 
she has been sharing such exquisite poetry today. Thank you for sharing your beauty, your your just your intellect, your 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 history of culture. Your you're just a phenomenal guest poet. And I'm looking forward to having this as one of the resources for our community of viewers, which, as you know, now we started with just local viewership, but with the advent of the internet, we are now global. So friends, family, everywhere around the globe can view this once it airs. And we will create a YouTube link that I will allow everyone to share this as well. So thank you again. This is CTV right here in Prince George's County, Maryland, offering the best and the brightest when it comes to poetry. And we are so very honored that today we have done just that, the best and the brightest. Thank you, Zena. Thank you so much, Sister Joy. I really appreciate it. What an honor. Oh, absolutely. And for those that want to be in touch, you can reach me at Poet Sister Joy. That's P-O-E-T-S-I-S-T-A-H-J-O-Y at AOL.com. And let us know about, you know, what your interests are when it comes to other poets that you haven't seen yet on Sojourn with Words. We've offered quite a few over these last 18 almost years now. And we appreciate the support and the awards that have been presented. But to always remember, when you have something in your heart, pick up that pen, put pen to paper, and keep writing. This is Sister Joy and Zaina Azam on Sojourn with Words on CTV. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for being with us. <laughs>